You're watching NBC4, working for you. Live from the area's leading news station, this is News 4 at 5. Later this week, the National Archives will reopen its rotunda and put back on display some of the country's most historic documents. The news media got a sneak preview today. The renovation of the rotunda and the new display case took two years to complete, and now they are ready for everyone to look at. For the first time ever, all four pages of the Constitution will be on display permanently. The Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights also showcased. The public will start viewing the documents this Thursday. The doors open at 10 a.m. I guess weather permitting, we need to say that about everything <laughs> these days, don't I guess we? so. I want to talk to you. And we'll show you an American treasure as you've never seen it before. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather reporting from CBS News headquarters in New York. The U.S. Constitution has withstood the test of time, but the parchment on which it is written was in desperate need of restoration. That has now been done, and CBS's Wyatt Andrews shows you what we the people will soon be able to see at the National Archives. This is the original, true Constitution. What they United signed. States. What they signed, yes. Mary Lynn Ritzenthaler of the National Archives recalls the moment with awe, the moment she picked up the actual United States Constitution to prepare its move to its new permanent case. What does the Constitution physically feel like? Well, it feels like a piece of skin, which it is. It's parchment and it feels somewhat cool to the touch. Four years ago, experts determined that the founding documents of America, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights were degrading in their old cases. What followed was among the most intense research projects facing the U.S. government, how to form a more perfect atmosphere to preserve the documents indefinitely. We also had um, some help from folks at NASA. From NASA? Mm-hmm. The scientists concocted an atmosphere of argon gas at 40% humidity, sealed in a gilded titanium encasement. Over here, we're going to display original documents. John Carlin, the archivist of the United States, says the documents themselves are unretouched, except where tiny chips of ink had come loose. If there was a piece of ink that had fallen off, if we could confirm where it fell off of, we could put it back. On Thursday, after a two-year absence, all three founding documents go back on public display in Washington, perhaps forever, all thanks to an army of archivists and scientists who mobilized, literally, to protect and defend the Constitution. Wyatt Andrews, CBS News, Washington. You're watching NBC4, working for you. Live from the area's leading news station, this is News 4 Today. President Bush and the First Lady will rededicate the National Archives Rotunda today before it reopens to the public tomorrow. The renovation of the Rotunda and the new display cases that protect the country's most historic documents took two years to complete. For the first time ever, all four pages of the Constitution will be put on permanent display. The Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights will also be showcased. The public can start viewing the documents tomorrow when the doors open at 10 in the morning weather permitting. Serving Virginia, Maryland, and the district. This is WUSA 9 News at 5 a.m. Mike, Andrea. All right, Beverly, thank you. In other news, America's founding documents are freshly cleaned, restored, and ready for state-of-the-art display. Tomorrow, the National Archives Rotunda reopens after two years of renovations, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and all four pages of the Constitution will dis be displayed in a titanium case filled with argon gas at 40% humidity. And for the first time, the new display cases will have wheelchair access they will be around long after we're gone. It is 6.52. And as the, uh, the vice president was speaking, you might have noticed briefly up on the screen, we showed you the president and what he's up to today. He is actually um, also in Washington, and there's the president leading the celebration today as the rotunda of the National Archives reopens after a two-year renovation project. 
And the uh, crown jewels, you might say, of this project are new display cases for the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. I want to remind you of some breaking news recovering out of uh, Washington right now. President Bush getting set to uh, address several uh, individuals at the archives where they're going to... Uh, oh, look at that. They're going to unveil. It's dark. But uh, they're going to unveil the National Archives exhibit hall after a two-year renovation there. Declaration of Independence, Constitution of the United States, Bill of Rights. All these things for the first time. All four pages, in fact, of the Constitution will be on continuous display. The rededication of the hall contains 14 new document cases tracing the story of the creation of those charters. Yeah, and all, the, all those important documents are known as the Charters of Freedom. So the President is there along yeah. with the First Lady, Chief Justice, all the yeah. leaders. From well, Congress you know it's got to be a big, big deal day. if you've got Dash and Bush in the same room, right? Exactly. We'll continue to follow this. We'll be back right after the break. <laughs> Live from the WJLA Broadcast Center, this is ABC 7 News at noon. President Bush was on hand to rededicate the Charters of Freedom at the National Archives. After a two-year renovation, all four pages of the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights are on display. The new cases will make them more accessible for young visitors and those using wheelchairs. Brian Van de Graaff joins us on... Well, our nation's founding documents are back on public display now after two years of restoration. President Bush led the unveiling of the new exhibit today at the National Archives in Washington. And the exhibit opens to the public tomorrow. Those are your headlines at this hour. You're watching NBC4, working for you. Live from the area's leading news station, this is News 4 at 5. Well, Isabel or no Isabel, the renovated National Archives will open its doors tomorrow. The museum plans to open on time and will hold a special ribbon-cutting ceremony in the morning, but evening outdoor activities are canceled. The remodeled rotunda is opening for the first time in two years and features new display cases containing the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. This morning, President Bush, Chief Justice William Rehnquist, and other dignitaries attended a ceremony to mark the rededication of those historic documents. Tomorrow, it's the public's turn. Right now, the museum plans to stay open until midnight, but that could change. If Metro shuts down, the museum will close. We have had yet another... We can once again get a close look at the original Constitution, Bill of Rights, and Declaration of Independence. The documents are back on public display after two years of preservation work. President Bush and congressional leaders today celebrating the, the rededication at the National Archives. For the first time, all four pages of the Constitution will be on display. Previously, only the first and last pages were exhibited. America owns the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, but the ideals they proclaim belong to all mankind. Well, the historic documents have been carefully restored, they tell us. Flakes of the original ink that had begun to lift from the parchment were glued back in place with tiny drops of adhesive. And now safety. Some of the most important documents in U.S. history are back on display in Washington. The original Constitution, Bill of Rights, and Declaration of Independence were returned to the newly renovated National Archives Rotunda today. All the documents are fresh from a two-year preservation project. President Bush was on hand when the papers were rededicated this morning. It is the first time all four pages of the Constitution are going on display. Previously, just the first and last pages were on view. It happened this week, a morning constitutional like no other. President Bush and other dignitaries walked into the newly renovated rotunda of the National Archives building in Washington on Wednesday for ceremonies marking the return to public view of the nation's three founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Although we routinely speak of our country's enduring constitution, 
It became clear years ago that the document itself would not endure indefinitely without an upgrade of the way it was being displayed. And so for the last two years, experts at the National Archives meticulously cleaned the age-old parchment. And even in some cases, resecured loose flakes of the original ink by using tiny drops of adhesive. Restored just in time for the Constitution's 216th birthday. The documents now rest securely in 24 karat gold-plated titanium frames sealed in a mini atmosphere of inert argon gas that should preserve them for many years to come. John Carlin, the archivist of the United States, says it is important that future generations be able to see the original documents. Every day for all of us as American citizens, these are the foundation of our democracy. They impact us. They live and breathe today. And once the doors were opened, Americans came to take that precious look. Thanks to modern science, America's charters of freedom are as physically secure as they can be. The rest is up to us. Our Sunday passage for September 21st, 2003. Now time for the Novak Zone. The rotunda of the National Archives building in the nation's capital reopened this month after a major renovation project. Here is Robert Novak with all of the details. Welcome to the Novak Zone. We're in the rotunda of the National Archives in downtown Washington, D.C., home of the Charters of Freedom, the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, with the senior curator of the National Archives, Stacy Bredhoff. Ms. Bredhoff, the archives have been closed for more than two, and a, two years. It just reopened. What did you do during those, that time that the archives were closed? Well, for one thing, we re-encased the Charters of Freedom. They're all in new, state-of-the-art encasements. The beautiful murals that you see here were taken down off the walls, restored, and put back. And the exhibit cases were just made more accessible in many ways. How much did that cost? Well, it would cost uh, over $100 million altogether. And that's a government pays for that? Uh, uh, mostly uh, government and, the, and private funds also. Now, I understand that the uh, Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were examined during this period that they were taken out. What, did you find anything uh, interesting about them? Well, the conservators found that they were in, uh, the Constitution particularly was in excellent condition. It was very strong and in great condition. Um, the Declaration of Independence has had a harder history. Um, it's always been beloved, and in its early years uh, of, the, of the nation, it was rolled up and put in burlap sacks and hauled around throughout the Revolutionary War, so it had a harder history. But it, too, is, is stable, and uh, all, of, all of the charters are in good shape. Uh, this beautiful building uh, was built in 1931 in downtown Washington. That, that is in the middle of the Depression. Uh, what you, how did that happen? Well, there, up until the 1930s, there had been no National Archives, and the records were not kept in any central place, so it was uh, a priority at that time to establish a uh, record keeper for the United States, and, and uh, that's what we are. What was here before the, uh, the uh, archives were built here in this part of the town? This was uh, it's called Market Square, and it was a public market. Ms. Berghoff, uh, there's so many things to to see in Washington uh, for a tourist, the Capitol, the White House. I guess you could go to the White House again, the Smithsonian Institution. Why would you come to uh, the archives? Well, I think the, the main experience here is to see the Charters of Freedom, the original Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights. Because even though we know what is written in them, we can open up any textbook and, and see what's written in them, there is a certain power just in being in the physical presence because the hands of the people that risked everything to get this nation started uh, were, touched those documents. Do you have other uh, documents here that, uh, uh, at the archives? The, the National Archives has billions, literally billions of uh, paper documents, uh, millions of photographs, maps, charts, architectural drawings, of course electronic records, motion pictures, sound recordings. So there's a huge volume of, of federal records. I understand that uh, maybe not here in this building, because you have another building out in Maryland, don't yes, you? Yes, in College Park, Maryland. 
Uh, I understand that there's, there's records of all the uh, military who have served uh, this country in the, in the, in the armed services. Is That's that right? right. The uh, National Archives has uh, military records. Can, can a person, uh, uh, just an ordinary citizen, go out and uh, see if his uh, uh, great-great-grandfather, uh, uh, what kind of war record he had? Well, as a matter of fact, 80% of the researchers that come to the National Archives are genealogists, and they're looking for information about family members, and uh, this is the place to come for that. How accessible is, is this building and the place in College Park to, uh, to researchers? Can anybody just walk in, or do you have to be certified, or what? Uh, you have to be 16 years of age, and that is the only requirement to obtain a research card. How many people come through here uh, a, year, a year? Do you have anything like that? We get about a million visitors who come to the National Archives primarily to see the Charters of Freedom. And now the big question for Stacy Bredhoff, Senior Curator of the National Archives. Ms. Bredhoff, <clears throat> I am fortunate enough uh, to live right across the street from the Archives, to tell the truth, and I get up in the morning and uh, often get out of my deck and look at, the, at your beautiful building, and there is a sign that if I put on my binoculars I can read, it says, what is past is prologue. Do you know what that means? Well, I think it means that it uh, means that it's important to remember the past um, because it uh, it has lessons for us all, and um, this building is filled with records of the stories of uh, United States history, and there are lessons in it for everybody. Uh, President Eisenhower once said uh, in a speech that that meant we ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> you think that's a good good explanation? I do. Yeah. Stacy Bredhoff, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for being in the Novak Zone. If any of you ever went to Washington, D.C. on a school field trip, chances are you went to the National Archives. But for the past two years, that massive building, as well as its historic documents, have been closed to the public, all undergoing renovation. Stacy Bredhoff is the senior exhibit curator with the National Archives, and she joins us now this morning from Washington. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. It's a pretty exciting time for all of you. Lots of renovations. Talk to us about them. I know there were renovations done on the building, but even more importantly, on these documents. Well, it, it is a very exciting time. The documents were uh, off display for two years, and they're back now, re-encased in a new state-of-the-art um, display. Uh, the rotunda has been renovated, the murals have been restored, and um, the documents are just, you know, they mm -hmm. look really great. And we're not talking about just any old documents here. I mean, these are the foundation upon which our country was made, were the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. I understand that the uh, Constitution had been eaten by insects. How, how did you go about repairing some of that at the top of it? Well, actually, the Constitution was found to be in excellent condition. There was a little bit evidence at the top of one of the pages of what the conservators call a lacing effect, and that was uh, evidence of damage by insects, but it was uh, repaired, and barely you can barely see where it was now. Mm -hmm. But also painstaking detail afforded to every single letter when you went over these documents. Talk to me about that. I mean, it was remarkable work they had to do under a microscope, right? That's right. The documents had previously been sealed in these encasements uh, for uh, more than 50 years. And uh, when they were taken out, the conservators examined them microscopically, letter by letter. They were looking for uh, places where the ink may have lifted off of the parchment, and they were able to repair uh, where that had happened. Yeah, by, by literally lifting up the, the ink, right, and having some sort of special adhesive, I mean, it was very complicated. That's right. It was extremely painstaking work, and it was done uh, by professional conservators uh, who work for the National Archives. I'm told, though, the text upon which uh, particularly the Declaration of Independence was written was written on a certain kind of parchment paper that is going to allow it to last for quite some time. You don't worry about it actually just falling apart, right? Well, that's true. In fact, all of the charters are written on parchment, which is an animal skin, which is specially treated. And uh, it was the tradition, uh, English tradition, to write legal documents on parchment because they are so long-lasting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about where these documents are going to be encased right now. What kind of things were built to keep them safely protected? And how close can the public get to them? Well, it's very easy. The public uh, can come visit the National Archives in Washington, D.C., and the documents, the Charters of Freedom, we call them, are on permanent display there. Um, 
they uh, they are one major improvement in the display is that all four pages of the Constitution can now be seen, uh, whereas mm -hmm. previously they were not. What do you expect people are going to react to this? I mean, when, when people come to the National Archives and they see these things, the building block of our country, how do they look when they're looking at them? How do they feel when they leave, you think? Well, I mean, we've, all, we've known that people are extremely interested in these documents. Uh, they've been on permanent display for more than 50 years at the National Archives. Millions and millions of people have come to see them. I think maybe now they have an even deeper appreciation uh, for what they mean and, and just how important it is to preserve them. Well, I can't wait to come and get a first-hand look myself. And thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank Stacey you. Brad Hoff, Senior Exhibit Curator with the National Archives. Well, after more than two years of restoration, the Charters of Freedom are back on display at the National Archives in Washington. The Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights have been given a high-tech facelift of sorts and new argon-infused display cases to ensure their longevity. Joining us today to tell us a bit about the restoration is Catherine Nicholson, Senior Conservator for the National Archives. Catherine, welcome. Hello, Sophia. So, let me just uh, get this straight. These documents needed to be restored. Why? Because they were already in, like, protective, you know, glassed-in cases, weren't they? That's right. They had been encased in about 1951, and they were metal and glass enclosures, but they were, they represented state-of-the-art in 1951, and actually they had uh, features that we thought were going to detract from the long-term stability of the documents. There was glass resting right on the parchment, and uh, we were concerned we could look through the glass, we could see what was going on, but we actually couldn't monitor them directly. Uh, we decided we had an opportunity with the uh, renovation of the rotunda to actually work on them for two years. We had them off display, and we were able to open each of the 1950s encasements, take the documents out, inspect them directly for the first time in 50 or actually probably 100 years for some of the items. Uh, determine if there were any needs for treatment and actually get uh, the go-ahead to carry out those treatments before they were sealed in new encasements. The new encasements are much larger and they're, they're much more spacious. There's no glass directly on the parchment. Well, given that space of, uh, of time, that span, 50 years, were you surprised at how well they held up or were they in pretty desperate need? Well, actually, I, I'm really happy to say that they are actually in very stable condition. The uh, parchment is quite strong. Uh, the ink uh, is, uh, except on the declaration, still quite legible. Uh, our concern was to make sure that the ink that is present on the parchment will last as long as possible. And so uh, quite a bit of our treatment focused on feeding ink underneath uh, any lifting flakes of ink. We did, uh, you can see there, there are little uh, spots where flakes have come off in previous decades, probably previous centuries. So we, uh, we re-adhered the ink uh, with very, very small droplets of ink applied under a binocular microscope. And there you can see we're looking through the microscope to examine the ink. And these are the words on the Declaration of Independence written on the back of the document. Um, the other thing that we carried out on the Constitution, in particular, the, the parchment was not flat. And so we humidified and flattened the parchment. I also understand that you put like ink on tape and then transferred it onto the document. Actually, no. no? We, our, we took a very, very conservative approach. Um, we looked for any ink that might have come off and might have been inside those old encasements. Uh, when we opened each one, we looked very, very carefully. We actually did not find any loose flakes of ink. The only ink we worked on was ink that was already uh, it was lifting off the parchment, but still attached. So we were reattaching ink in its original location. But we um, would, you simply couldn't tell uh, where any loose flake might have come from, and actually we didn't find any loose flakes. Understood. Now I know uh, you just described the intricate processes that you, t uh, that you uh, encountered. We know it took two years uh, for this restoration project. How much did it cost? Uh, the, the cost, there are many, many people who worked on this project. Uh, the, the cost of making the new encasements uh, was probably more than a million dollars. We had some foundation money for that. Uh, 
the actual conservation treatments was carried out as part of our uh, normal duties, and so that was somewhat absorbed. All right. Catherine Nicholson, thank you so much for joining us. Catherine is a senior conservator for the National Archives. Thanks again. Thank you. Well, lots more to come right to do and what you need to know. Holly. Okay, Sean, take a look at that. That is the Declaration of Independence, and you haven't been able to see that in over two years. That's because the National Archive has been undergoing renovation. We're here live this morning as they open to the public this week, but they're allowing us to give you the first look at the old documents. We're going to tell you what's all new coming up live next on Fox Side Morning News. Stay with us. Archives Rotunda has been closed for renovation since July 5th, 2001, more than two years ago. But today we get an exclusive tour before the public gets to see the results. Fox Files Holly Morris is live in Northwest with more than this grand preview. Holly, very exciting. <laughs> it is very exciting, and grand is definitely the appropriate word, Lark, because we're talking about, of course, the grandest documents in our nation's history. And we are indeed talking about a grand renovation to the tune of $100 million. Stacey Bredhoff is the senior curator. She joins me in the rotunda this morning, and it's an exciting day. It's very exciting. It is. We thank you so much for letting us uh, get this first look at these documents. Why was it so needed, this renovation? Because I know, you know, a million people a year come and visit the archives, so it was a big decision to close it down. It was. Um, there were two things really driving the renovation. The first is that the Charters of Freedoms, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and Bill of Rights had been in these encasements for about 50 years and they needed to come out and get into new encasements. So that was one reason. And the other was that this building is uh, 60 years old and it just needed a lot of uh, updating. We have some pictures from when the documents were lowered for the last time. Um, and, and it is kind of twofold because the um, documents had to be cleaned, correct? That's right. They, uh, they were taken out of those encasements where they'd been sealed for uh, almost half a century. They were cleaned and a few uh, tears were mended and they were put back in the, a new state-of-the-art, uh, these new encasements. So let's talk about the new encasements, because the second part of this is the new house, I guess, for these precious documents. You're looking there at the Declaration of Independence. Um, tell us what's new and different. The, the first thing I noticed is the tilting of the cases. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, uh, visitors can now get closer to the document, and they can have a much clearer look through the glass. The documents are not uh, touched by anything except this very high-quality cellulose paper underneath, so they're uh, a lot safer, and, and the visitors can uh, get a lot closer look. And one of the things you were talking about as we move on over to the Constitution is about the glass not touching the paper, because before the glass was touching the paper, and that's really a big difference. Mm -hmm. It is, and another really major difference is that previously, there was only room to exhibit two pages of the Constitution. Now, for the first time ever, we're showing the entire Constitution, all four pages, uh, on permanent display. So you're seeing all four pages. In addition, you have some other exciting documents, like the letter that George Washington wrote prior to the Constitution. That's right. We have, uh, well, we have this new exhibit that really tells the story of the charters. A lot of the changes that you see in here were to make the charters more accessible physically. And we have this exhibit in these other 14 cases that really tell the story of, of why they're important. We also want to talk a little bit about the magnificent murals here because that was also part of the restoration process. So tell me what they had to do there. That's right. Well, they came and they took these huge murals that you see. They took them off the walls, which was a big undertaking. They weighed about 350 pounds each. And they were taken out of the building. They were restored um, and put back. And now they're, uh, you know, in all their splendor. And also, uh, there's a new visitor center, I understand. That's right. Well, this is the first phase of the reopening. The, uh, we'll be greeting people back into the rotunda beginning on Thursday. And that's just the first phase of new, uh, of a whole variety of public spaces and public programming that, that we're starting. What's the feel that you want people to get when they come into the rotunda and they actually see these documents? Well, I think because it's a very monumental space, people know they come in here and, and they're going to be seeing something important. And what we would like to do is to tell people the story, to let them know that these, you know, towering figures that you see in these murals were actually real people, and they were acting in the real world, and they worked, uh, struggled to create a government based on certain ideas and ideals, and uh, against great odds. 
And it's the force of these ideals of freedom and equality that really engendered the birth of the nation and uh, has sustained the nation. When I was reading an article about it, is it fair to say that it is possible and or probable that these documents don't ever have to be touched by human hands again for another hundred years? Well, that, that's the hope, is that they won't, they won't be, you don't need to get at them for another hundred years, but they were designed so that if there is a need to, to get into the cases, it, it can be done. Daisy, thank you so much oh. for giving us the first look this morning. We really do appreciate it. We understand the excitement to say the least. And because it is such an exciting time, the archives is having special hours. Thursday is when it actually opens to the public. Those special hours run Thursday through Saturday, 10 a.m. until midnight, then Sunday, 10 until 5.30. Coming up in our next hour, we're going to learn more about some of the new things here at the National Archives. Back to you. Thanks, Holly. Well, still ahead this morning, some disappointing... This morning, Holly Morse has found her way into the newly reopened <laughs> National Archives. Good morning, Holly. I found my way in, but I swear it's all legit. Security standing close by as we are indeed looking at the top documents that help shape our nation. We're talking about the Charters of Freedom. They are now being seen once again after the archives has finished its massive renovation. Coming up, though, there are other documents that are very important to our history. How you can engage in a historical debate Live next from Fox 5 Morning News. Stay with us. One man is reopening with the Charters of Freedom on display for the first time in more than two years. But there's more to see and do at the National Archives, too. Fox 5's mm -hmm. Holly Morris is live inside this morning with uh, more on the big vote. Holly, what does that mean? Well, you know, I think I read in one of these documents here that we all have the right to vote, and this is a vote that you definitely are going to want to be involved in. First, though, you know, I never get tired of looking at these amazing documents when you sit here and think, okay, that's the actual Declaration of Independence, the actual one that Thomas Jefferson held in his hands. It really, indeed, is amazing. John Carlin is an archivist, and he joins me. Do you ever get tired of looking at it? Never. <laughs> never, right? No. These documents are so important for us today and undergird our democracy, impact us every day. It's not just looking at old documents. These are live and well today. They are indeed live and well, and you guys are keeping them even more alive by kind we're of engaging at. the nation in a debate. Okay, That's my right. first question. We're, we're trying to figure out the top ten most influential documents in our history. That's right. We're going to, with the help of U.S. News and working with National History Day, have a people's vote. Uh, we're going to put out 100 documents. They can write in if they don't like the 100 that we put out to, to vote on and give people an opportunity to pick out the top 10. What are the 10 most important records that have influenced this country? And at certain locations you have these special kiosks. We'll have special kiosks in many locations, but for most, internet mm -hmm. access, us.com, usnews.com will take care of it. And so, uh, now, people I guess will have a chance to really participate. I guess it would be fair to say that the top three are here. <laughs> I think they'll yes. come out. Of I think so. <laughs> so we're really choosing seven, right? That, that, well, but we're going to give people a chance. I mean, if they think one of the amendments to the Constitution is more important than the original Constitution, that'd be a possibility. Okay, if we're even talking about the top spot, would it be the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution that you think was the most influential? Well, Holly, I think it's going to be the Constitution, my guess is, because just for an example, the recall decision that was made yesterday by a federal court, uh, uh, appellate court in, in uh, California. It's linked to this document right here we're standing by. And, you know, there's things that you always learn here. We just saw the Bill of Rights over there, and we always think of the Bill of Rights in terms of 10, but there's 12 listed there. There's 12, but the first two never passed. So... What were the first two? Uh, they dealt with reapportionment and uh, congressional salaries. And the, the second salaries was dealt with in 1992, and it's the 27th Amendment to the Constitution. You never stop learning. Well, you never stop learning, even you, sure. the archivist, oh, yeah, you know, and I, th I thought you would know everything. As we take a look at the four pages of the Constitution, the first time that we've been able to do that, um, what are some of the other documents that you think will rank among the top ten? Well, there's a possibility that a Lee resolution, for an example, which preceded the Declaration, uh, when they actually voted to make the decision, it wasn't a document that's gotten all the publicity. Uh, that's one possibility. But... Uh, It'll be interesting, uh, Emancipation Proclamation, I think we'll get a, a lot of votes, but, you know, we're not trying to steer the people. I want the people to, <laughs> want know, the people to we're decide. Gonna have, we're going to have paper ballots that uh, we're going to be handing out, and, and a lot of people, most people go online. Well, one thing I want to make sure I get in, because when you and I first talked, which we talked two years ago, when That's you closed right, down, we, closed we were down. here on the last day, um, right. one of the biggest differences that you'll notice is 
you don't have to climb those 39 steps, and yes, I did count this morning. You did, okay. To come, <laughs> to come in. You're going to okay. go in on the first level. That's right. And, and then you have the opportunity to come up a grand staircase or use elevators. Uh, ADA compliance. And you're having the renovation. And you guys are having a bunch of events all weekend long. Yes, we are. We're celebrating starting on Thursday. We open to the public at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll have. We're going to stay open on midnight Thursday, Friday, know, Saturday amazing. night. Amazing. Very. It could good. be a little wet during some of that, but the weekend sounds great, and we certainly want the people to come out and enjoy. Well, thank and you. And pick up a ballot. And vote. And well, start we to vote. we sure have enjoyed this morning, to say the least. I want to say congratulations. We were here two years ago. You said it would take two years. We appreciate you coming back. We're back here, and tomorrow's Constitution Day, right? That's right. All right. Very good. So it's the best day to come out and see the Constitution. Absolutely. <laughs> Take advantage of the archives. Archives.gov is the website, so you can check out all the things they have going on here all the time. Back to you guys. Sounds exciting. I can't wait. Holly, thank you very much. We'll have a final check on weather when we come back.